Welcome everyone to another edition of Biotherapy Live, being broadcast live on Zoom and Facebook, uh, eventually recorded and posted on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Today's uh, edition is going to be about leech therapy, the root therapy. And we're gonna take some of your questions and do our best to answer them. Maybe some of the listeners will uh, offer some answers too and correct me or add to what I have to say. So let's hear the official introduction from Albert and then we'll get started. Thank you, Albert. As I mentioned uh, just a few seconds ago, today's uh, edition of Biotherapy Live will focus on erudotherapy. Several months ago, we had a question and answer session in which we answered some questions and there were so many questions we didn't actually get through them all. So today, I thought we would Start, start off with some of the questions we didn't get to, and then uh, we'll take some new questions. We'll take questions that people sent in in advance, and any questions that you have now, put them in the chat box, and uh, Albert will be reading the chat, chat box periodically, checking it for new questions, and we'll, we'll do those as well. So I'm going to begin though, where I left off on the last session. And one of the questions, I'll read them for you, is once the leech detaches itself, how much bleeding usually occurs? Is the bleeding managed by absorbent dressings? Well, the amount of bleeding depends on a number of factors, uh, how well the local vascularization is, how, how good the circulation locally is. It uh, depends also on the size of the leech and the number of leeches that were placed. The leeches will feed for on average 45 minutes, the larger or older leeches uh, drawing more blood than the younger, smaller leeches. But after they drop off, the area will continue to bleed, usually bleeding slowly, oozing, we call it, for anywhere from three to six to 12 or even more hours than that. I would say on average, uh, six, eight hours is a, a reasonable ballpark average. And again, a very generalized um, estimate might be uh, 25 to 50 mils of blood per leech, sometimes more. The critical issue will be how soon the, uh, the host, the patient, the client uh, clots. Uh, and that is indeed the key to some of the other concerns that often come up. How, how many more treatments do you need if it, if it uh, stops bleeding early and you want to phlebotomize more, then that would be the time to add additional leeches. 
question, let me see here. Question number 15. Are there many places that use leech therapy? <laughs> I don't really have uh, any handle on the number of centers using leeches and probably nobody does. There are two FDA cleared um, production laboratories or distribution laboratories, I should say, in the United States. One is in New York, that's Leeches USA. The other is Carolina Biological, Carolina Leeches. And their customer lists are obviously private. Um, so there is no published uh, list. Not only that, but some people do not use FDA cleared or, or uh, medical grade leeches, shall we say. Uh, they are, sorry, I moved forward. They are using uh, other leeches that are available through various importers, uh, and distributors. So I can't really answer that uh, question, but I can say that it is enough to support two commercial laboratories. So it's not uh, insignificant. Do they do leech counts in medical therapy to make sure all leeches are accounted for after treatment. Most likely places will count the leeches as they are removed. Uh, and that's a good practice. Leeches are not buried under the skin. They're not like sponges and needles and hemostats and things that can get lost in an open abdomen or a surgical site because they are not um, used internally. They are attached uh, on the outside of the, of the skin. So they're relatively easy to see, right? Well, if they drop off and you don't notice that they drop off, uh, they're not in the patient. They're not a danger to the patient. They are satiated, they are finished sucking blood, but they are uh, perhaps under the blanket or on the floor. Uh, and so most places will certainly do a count, make sure they're all accounted for when they're removed. But again, it's not so much because it's a danger to the patient to have a, a retained leech inside, that doesn't happen, uh, but just to make sure that there are no surprises uh, by someone uh, to someone who's changing the bedding. In addition, you're going to want to handle those leeches in a way appropriate for biohazardous material. They do contain patient's blood, and that's another reason to make sure you have them all uh, and dispose of them all uh, correctly. Question number 17. How many leeches would you use at a time? This is quite variable. It depends on both the, the area that you're treating, the size or surface area that you're treating, and it depends on its, um, uh, its response. If you're, for example, doing a second treatment or a third treatment, you might want to adjust the dose based on the response to the first treatment. In general, uh, most people will use, let's say one, a, a good ballpark uh, figure might be one uh, leech for, for a, uh, an area the size of a, what's that? Uh, an apricot. Uh, we medicine people often, uh, uh, describe things in the sizes of, of food. 
um, an apricot, a plum size. So maybe two, two inches, five, six uh, centimeters in diameter um, would be about the largest area um, of venous stasis that you might want to address with the leech um, and then add more uh, leeches beyond that. How long is leech therapy used and how frequently can you use it on the same wound? I will interpret this as speaking about the leech itself. Uh, how uh, I will interpret this as how long would you leave the leech attached or on and how frequently would you use uh, leeches on the same wound? So the second half, how frequently you use it would be, um, depend on when the bleeding stops. Your goal is to phlebotomize the patient, is to remove blood uh, that is stagnating, that is not draining properly, and maybe I should have described this at the very outset, kind of a, a brief overview of the clinical context that we're speaking of here. So I'll do it now since I didn't do it earlier. We're focusing primarily on the use of hirudotherapy in medical practice as regulated by the FDA for congested blood, for areas typically that have had surgery, such as the reattachment of an appendage, the reattachment of an ear, a nose, a finger, where, or flap surgery where a myocutaneous or big muscle and skin flap is moved over for reconstructive surgery, we can attach the arteries to bring fresh oxygenated blood into the area, but we cannot easily reattach the veins, which are fragile, thin walled. Um, those will attach themselves over time, but if they don't attach quickly enough, then the um, area is supplied with fresh oxygenated blood, which pools in that area cannot escape if the veins are not connected, if the lymph flow cannot handle it all. And so the area builds in pressure and more pressure, more pressure. And at some point, um, often within just a couple of days, three days, four days, two days, um, the pressure has built up so high that the pressure of the arteries, the blood pressure, is not sufficient to push fresh oxygenated blood into the area anymore. And at that point, the tissue is going to die without oxygen. So leeches are used in that situation to remove the stagnant blood. And you would continue that until the venous um, drainage is reestablished. That might be a day later, that might be two, four, five days later, depending on the individual. Uh, that's the duration of therapy. So what is the frequency? The frequency is as often as you need to drain the blood. Now, as we spoke earlier, even after the leeches are removed, blood continues to drain from the site. And if it's at a reasonable speed, then you would not reattach any more leeches until the bleeding stops. If, however, and this ties into one of the previous questions, if, however, the bleeding is slow, the you put on two or three leeches and 
it is still purple, swollen, uh, dusky, not looking good at all. And the drainage from those three sites is slow. You might even attach two or three more leeches before it even finishes draining from those sites. So bottom line is all of these decisions are directed by the patient's clinical status uh, combined with your goals of therapy. Are you getting enough blood out? Are you getting blood out fast enough? And has the patient reestablished uh, the uh, drainage so that leaching is no longer necessary? Uh, as far as how long is leech therapy or how long is the leech attached? Um, on average, about 45 minutes. Uh, the range is usually 30 to, uh, on the very far side, 90 minutes. Are there certain states that use leeches more than others. I live in Texas and have only performed maggot therapy. A sad face, yes, indeed. Um, there are certain states that use leeches more than other states, just as some use maggot therapy, um, heart transplants, just you name it, uh, there is, um, regional variation in almost all of the significant um, medical procedures. And there are several reasons for that. Number one, demographics differ. Uh, in some states, um, for example, um, industrial uh, injuries, farm injuries are going to be more common than in other states. So the types of, um, of situations that are likely to require reattachment of fingers and limbs and so on and so forth is going to vary from region to region. Um, and this isn't just from state to state, but within a state, um, a city versus a rural uh, area, for example, is going to differ in the types of situations, medical conditions, and indications for these therapies. Secondly, there's variation because of the population uh, uh, demographics and densities and so forth. So certain cities will use uh, certain treatment, including leech therapy, more than um, the suburbs, more than uh, some other some other area where hospitals may be less, uh, um, less dense, uh, population dense, that is. Another reason why regions differ is because uh, clinicians tend to practice where they train or do their final training, their specialty training, they tend to settle down in those areas and they do what they're taught in those programs. So programs that do a lot of leech therapy um, will have graduates settling in the region uh, more than elsewhere and they will probably do a lot of leech therapy too. Those training centers that don't do much of this or that therapy, again, will have um, uh, fewer graduates doing it, and they're all going to be, not all, they, uh, many of them are going to be populating that area. The next question is, what is the general lifespan of a leech? What about when they've had no blood supply to feed on? So, there are many types of leeches. We're focusing on those that are used medicinally, such as Hirudo medicinalis. And this leech can live for years. Um, sometimes the leeches that 
that you will be offered uh, will be a giant or jumbo leech. And that leech might be three years old, uh, frequently is three years old. So they can live for many, 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 many years. But they do need blood. And if you, uh, the leech is starving, then it can, it can go three to six months, three months easily. Six months, um, in my experience, is, is they, they get rather sickly beyond six months. Um, yes, many will live beyond six months, but not a lot beyond six months. And in, again, in my experience, they are sickly. They don't move as fast. They don't even feed as well after six months. Um, they, uh, so generally the leeches that you get um, from a um, reliable supply uh, company will be between three and six months. Why not leeches that have more recently eaten? Um, and, 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 and often for, uh, further beyond the three months. Why, uh, uh, why not a leech that is less than three months or recently eaten? It's because it contains blood from the meal and you don't want uh, that leech for two reasons. Number one, if it's recently fed, it may not uh, desire another blood meal just yet. And number two, it could harbor blood in its body and it takes, um, well, let me rephrase that. Uh, within three months, or by the time you've gone three months, that blood has gone out of the leech. And so they are uh, safer for that reason. So generally between three and six months, uh, from the last blood meal is, is uh, the state at which you'll get your leeches. And those are the reasons why. Next question is, is this leech therapy reimbursable through insurance or self-pay? And does Medicare cover leeches? So, I'll admit right off the bat that I'm not sure exactly what reimbursable through self-pay means, uh, but is it reimbursable through, maybe, maybe the question is, is it reimbursable through insurance or do uh, patients have to self-pay? Uh, I'll interpret it that way. Um, it is reimbursable through insurance. M Medicare does cover leeches as a general statement. Remember that Medicare funding or reimbursement is distributed through subcontractors and subcontractors like all insurance companies, uh, make most of their money out of what they don't pay for medical care, right? If, if, um, if everything passed right through uh, insurance companies, then there would be nothing to um, um, fund the insurance company or the shareholders. So, the less they pay, obviously, the more they get to keep. Um, and the point of mentioning that is that it helps us understand why uh, reimbursement is not made such a simple matter. Uh, often there are um, codes you have to um, um, submit with justification and uh, um, evidence of 
of what you did and why you did it and adequate documentation. And then the uh, clerical person may not recognize that uh, if there isn't a specific um, computer code that's, that is precise for what you want to do. So it, it can be sometimes a little difficult, but like for many of the uh, less common, less traditional uh, methodologies, or for anything that's declined, um, the medical team simply needs to appeal uh, a denial. And then you get to speak to a clinician uh, at the insurance company uh, or Medicare subcontractor insurance company and explain what you did and why, and generally it goes without a hitch thereafter. Um, I think that's sufficient for this uh, question. What do you do for those patients with anxiety related to having leeches on them? Well, I would say that's a pretty common um, issue. Uh, people don't like bugs on them, don't like things on them, especially not blood sucking things. And the, and the approach that I generally take is simply education. Uh, I begin with education uh, in, in discussing with them what it is, why it is. And then I let them ask me questions. I give them time to consider it. Uh, I provide written materials if they're interested in reading more or seeing more. Another approach that I find useful is letting them speak to other patients who have already experienced leech therapy. And for this reason, I uh, strongly support, and we used to produce uh, videos many years ago from patients undergoing biotherapy, putting those on YouTube or on CDs and passing them out to clinicians so that they could hear, so that they could give them to their patients and their patients could hear firsthand from another patient who had already experienced maggot therapy, leech therapy, or whatever. Um, those are the primary ways that, that I address anxiety. Next question is, is there a difference in the sucking ability of the male leeches versus the female leeches? Well, that's a very interesting question, maybe fortuitous question, because it, it uh, allows me to speak a little bit about the biology of the leeches. Leeches are actually hermaphroditic. There is no separate organism, male from female, but they are not both male and female at the same time. They actually go through um, a progression. Uh, they are first, first male, and then as they get older, they become female. And it is the female that actually lays the cocoons from which um, the next generation of, of leeches will, will emerge. The mouth parts don't change. So there really is no difference between the sucking ability of the leeches between when they are male and female. That said, 
they may be stronger at sucking and certainly suck for longer and take in more blood when they're older. Just being much, much bigger animals, bigger leeches, they're gonna need more blood and they're going to be able to hold more blood. So they'll, they'll take in more blood. So in that respect, one could argue that there is a difference because as they get older, they change genders as well as a change in the amount of blood and the strength by which they can suck. But it's related to age, not so much because of their gender. The next question is, when pharmacies give leeches, they've fed on animals. So is it possible to get things like mad cow, et cetera? Theoretically, it is possible to catch an infection. In some infections we don't yet even know about or recognize uh, due to blood that's in the leech because some of that blood can be regurgitated, especially if you're handling the leech while it's still on or trying to move or remove the leech while it's still attached. That's why you never do that because they will often regurgitate blood. And being attached, there's now a direct connection to the host bloodstream, to the patient's bloodstream. So theoretically that is indeed possible. From a practical standpoint, we don't allow that to happen because we don't just feed or give out leeches that just fed on animals. Um, the leeches shouldn't be feeding on cows uh, in the first place, but often they are fed on small mammals uh, by some laboratories, um, but not recently. They're given enough time as we discussed earlier so that the blood can completely pass uh, through the system and any um, microbes are eliminated uh, in that way. What's the average time for one treatment session? So the amount of time on average for the leech attachment is about 45 minutes but a treatment session often entails some preparation uh, of, the, of the area of the leech and so forth. And it may be a few minutes before the leech even uh, is ready to attach. You might have to sit there with it for five minutes before it actually attaches. So I would say the pre-sucking period might be 15 minutes. Uh, to prepare and attach the leech. The post uh, treatment is going to be five minutes to uh, uh, gather the leech, leeches, put them into um, a jar for appropriate disposal, um, wrap the uh, wound or bandage the, room, the, uh, the area and so forth. So maybe a total treatment of about an hour um, to as long as an hour and a half. What's the best way to store the leeches? The leeches can be stored short term, uh, easily enough at room temperature in um, salt water. They are said to prefer um, darker areas, not, uh, not light, certainly not direct sunlight. Um, so often, here we go, often they're, they're stored in ceramic uh, leach jars um, and the ceramics keep the light from getting through. There's holes on top to allow uh, air to get in and inside are the leeches 
in salt water. Uh, there's actually a, an appropriate amount of water per leech, just like for fish. Um, to my recollection, it was somewhere around six or seven leeches per gallon of water. Uh, now, the leech jars above uh, that you saw were the some early leech jars that we made at the Better Foundation. Uh, but as we increased uh, our uh, research efforts and research laboratory, uh, and we as we started handling thousands of leeches, uh, we developed different bottles. These bottles. Uh, that you see here uh, were developed for, for our program uh, out of glass jars with a mesh on top. And the mesh allows us to change the water as it gets dirty uh, and the frequency of changing water depends on a number of, of factors, but it can be anywhere from um, uh, one, two, it can, it can be as often as every day. Sometimes they'll dirty up the water uh, within an hour after um, putting in fresh water. Um, but at colder temperatures, and here you see them stored in the refrigerator uh, for long-term storage, um, at colder temperatures, the water may need to be changed only twice a week. But it, this jar had a special top which allowed us to drain the water uh, without removing the leeches. And then we could remove the cap and clean the cap or replace the cap with a fresh cap. And that cap would uh, contain all of their shedded material um, and other debris uh, that would come out of the uh, water it would stick to the to the lid. We could wash it later, but for the time being, we could just put in a fresh uh, filter and cap, and um, and it made things so much more efficient and faster. So if you're going to store the leeches for the short term, room temperature, if you're going to store them for three months after feeding or longer, uh, then you should really uh, have them in the refrigerator. The refrigerator uh, will slow down their metabolism uh, and allow them to um, survive better, healthier, uh, and, and uh, so forth. So, kind of depends on when you plan to, to use your leeches. The leeches that, you, that hospitals get and, and uh, practitioners get, they have already been starving for three or six months. So you should, you should if, if you're not gonna use those straight away, if you're just saving them in your hospital, for example, until the next uh, emergency uh, situation arises where you need a leech to drain that congested blood, then keep them in your refrigerator absolutely so that they will still be healthy um, and not um, swimming around starving uh, for their next meal at room temperature. Let's see. The next question is Do healthcare professionals have to be certified in leech therapy? The answer there is no. Even if they do leech therapy, they don't have to be certified in it. There is no certification program at this time. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the people most likely to be asked, how do we get leeches? How do we apply the leeches? Where do we store the leeches? How do we do leech therapy? The people in the hospital most likely to be asked will be number one, wound care therapists, especially if they do maggot therapy, because lots of people uh, think that 
maggots and leeches must be the same uh, in, in many respects. Uh, the second most common group to be asked will be the pharmacists because they are often the ones that store the leeches in the refrigerator. Um, and the third uh, will be the, the plastic surgery team itself. Um, they'll be number one if they've done it before, but if it's their first time, um, they and others will ask these other health professionals. Um, because there is no certification program, there's not even a lot of training programs. Um, the Better Foundation uh, periodically has training programs, maybe once every year, twice, uh, uh, or every other year, uh, we'll have a training program. But most of the leech therapy training that's available in the community is aimed not so much at uh, hospital and clinic use of leeches, uh, but at uh, the non-regulated uh, use of, of leeches, of leeching. Next question, is this a more expensive treatment than maggot therapy? Well, that's much harder to answer, uh, largely because the expense of maggot therapy to begin with can be quite variable depending on the number of treatments, depending on the size of the wound, um, depending on what additional dressings might be needed. Uh, at first thought, it's a bit daunting to try and answer this question, but what I'm going to do instead is to say, in a way, it doesn't really matter the expense compared to maggot therapy because these are going to be used for totally different things. So um, if the, so there is never going to be a situation where you have to say, well, should I do maggot therapy or leech therapy? Which one is more expensive? Because that, that doesn't arise. Different indications, different situations, you'll never have to choose between one or the other. Um, if you simply want an idea of the expense of leech therapy, I would say this. The expense of the leeches, medical grade is generally on the order of $15 per leech, $12 to $20 per leech, more expensive for the larger leeches, less expensive sometimes for the smaller leeches, but on the order of $15, $18 per leech. Often you have to buy a minimum quantity of leeches that's going to increase the expense, but the real super expense of, of leech therapy is not the leeches, but the transportation. When you need leech therapy in the hospital for someone whose who's surgical site is vascularly congested, you need it now. And transportation of the leeches now can be hundreds of dollars, depending on how, um, how you get it to you and from where. Now, if you have a regional center, if your hospital or if one of the hospitals in the city decides they're going to house leeches at all times, they're always going to have a supply of 20 leeches, for example, um, and you can just get it from across town, why then it's a substantial uh, savings in transportation, but more importantly, it's a substantial savings in time to get your treatment. Um, that's pretty much all I could tell you about the expense of leech therapy. Uh, uh, maybe one other thing I'll add. Leeches that are 
not cleared by FDA are less expensive, um, much less expensive. Um, in part, that's because their management, their raising, their housing, their treatment does not have to meet good manufacturing practices, does not have to meet FDA regulatory compliance. And so there's lots of savings uh, in their production. Um, on the other hand, uh, you don't always know where they've been, who they fed on, when they last fed, and so forth, because there is no, uh, there is not the same degree of documentation, um, inspection, and so forth. Question number 30, do you need a special license to obtain leeches? Uh, leeches from the two suppliers that I mentioned, being that they are regulated by FDA and cleared for marketing by FDA, must comply with the fact that they are prescription medical devices in the United States. So the only special license that one needs to obtain medicinal leeches from those two distributors is a medical license and a DEA, <laughs> excuse me, and a DEA prescribing license. If you can prescribe or if you can prescribe with a supervisor's um, prescribing license, uh, that's all you need. Uh, to uh, uh, submit, basically a prescription of sorts. Can you use saline for the leeches? So there are several ways to interpret this question and given the late time, I think this will be the final question. S can you use saline for the leeches to remove them? Some people use salt, some people use alcohol, and they sprinkle it on the leech in order to irritate it when it's attached and induce it to let go. That's not a good idea because as I mentioned, it does regurgitate and while the blood that's going to now enter the patient um, came from the patient, um, there could be all sorts of other things in that blood. We didn't talk about the microbial flora, but leeches, even medical grade leeches are not germ free. They have microorganisms in their gut, which help them to digest uh, the, uh, the blood. And when they regurgitate, they are even more likely than normal to, um, well, when they regurgitate, they will inject that, uh, uh, those microbes into the patient and are more likely than normal to cause infection. So you don't want to pull the leeches or put anything um, disturbing on them to make them let go because they don't want to let go and they will do other things to fight you. Uh, if the meaning is, can you use saline to, um, to store the leeches? Indeed, that is, uh, they, they do need salt water, uh, not plain water. And it's not just salty water because many of the metal ions uh, that you will get out of tap water uh, can be toxic for the leeches. So the leeches, uh, the water that you start with before making it salt water should be distilled or deionized, not tap water. And not just sterile water, uh, boiling the tap water is not sufficient either. But then they need some salt and the salt Table salt uh, 
is not the best thing. Uh, saline, medical saline, uh, that you might find in the clinics and the hospitals and so forth, is sodium chloride. And that is not quite adequate either. Um, we've we tried various uh, uh, salts in our research laboratory uh, to make our own salts. Um, and uh, even the purest grade sodium chloride was, was uh, not satisfactory to keep them alive long. So you should use a, a specific leach salt. We, used to, we finally came up with a formula uh, to make our own leach salt and actually packaged it uh, for our laboratory personnel uh, so that they didn't have to weigh it or handle it or measure it each time they went to, to put it in the containers. They just grabbed the bag that was already pre, uh, pre aliquoted, aliquoted, pre aliquoted to add to one liter, uh, one gallon, five gallons, whatever of, uh, of, uh, distilled water um, to make the appropriate concentration. So salt solution, yes. And uh, that is what the leeches do best in. And I think, I think that's all the questions we, we got prior to this program. Albert, have there been any questions in the chat? Uh, no, Dr. Sherman, I don't see any uh, further questions in the Zoom chat or the Facebook Live feed. Well, I hope uh, you all enjoyed uh, this session and uh, maybe learned a thing or two. I certainly learn something whenever I, I get questions and have the opportunity to, to uh, consider how, you know, how to best address some of the concerns and, and thoughts out there. We will have posted shortly uh, next month's Biotherapy Live uh, topic. You know what it is, Albert? It's going to be uh, hippotherapy, I believe. Hippotherapy, all right. I love hippos. Um, so with that, uh, since there are no more questions, I'll close the session. Thank you all for attending uh, and for sending in questions. Thank you, Albert, for helping produce this program. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>